It's raining. Happy Friday. Welcome to Fertile Soil. Yep, it's raining. There will be no time spent out there in the garden. However, we really need this nice steady rain that's coming down. All the plants are going, ah. So, it's good it's raining. Hope everybody's doing good. Hope you had a good week. And I had a good week. So we're going to talk about basil today. I think basil is one of the most used or very popular culinary herbs. It's so good. Summertime and basil go together very well. Can't see it in my garden right now. Well, I guess you could, but I'm not going to walk out there in the rain today. Basil. I cut a bunch so I'd have it to show you. Basil is a wonderful annual herb. You have to plant it every year. Basil, um, I believe, let me look here and make sure I have this correctly. Yeah, it originated in India, Iran area. Basil is grown all around the globe. It's grown everywhere. Basil being an annual in most places. There's a couple hybrids that are perennials, but they're hybrids and I don't believe that they are located in our area. I have never seen any. I, somebody could prove me wrong on that. But around here, it's an annual. Most popular way to grow basil in your garden is to buy it a little plant from your local greenhouse. I love to grow basil by seed. That's kind of a chancy thing, especially this spring. Oh, how cool it was in the spring. Basil does not like it cool at all. It loves hot and humid and sunny. A little bit of coolness is going to slow down your basil growth or make your your leaves like look like they're frostbitten even though it might not be frost in your garden they do not at all like it cold so this year i had a couple plants that i had planted but i start my sweet basil by seed and i put a whole pack in my garden a whole pack of seeds Thought I was gonna be a one-upper, have tons of basil like I did last year. Well, we got a cold spell. I have two sweet basils that survived that coldness. But that's the chance you take by doing it from seed. If you plant basil in a container early in the spring, you can always bring that inside out of the cool if it gets too cold in the evenings. Well, there are about 64 different varieties of basil. Basil, the word basil, is a, it comes from Greek, and it's osium basilicum. And that refers to its fragrance. It's to be fragrant is what it means. And if you ever touch basil or if you ever use basil, you'll understand that because it is very fragrant and it's super delicious. And some of the different varieties that you can get are, um, there, there's just way too many to mention. If I had a couple hours, I could. But we have Tulsi basil, which I also have growing, and cinnamon basil, which looks very similar to the Tulsi basil. We'll talk about that little purple flower there in a minute. Sweet basil, of course, a regular standard basil, which I have in here. Lemon basil, uh, there's a curly leaf purple basil, 
uh, gosh, cinnamon basil, holy basil, which is a little bit of a different variety. That one has more medical properties to it. Oh, uh, we have citrus scented basil, colored basil, small leaf globe basil, spicy basils. There's, there's so many. And when you go to the greenhouses earlier in the spring, you'll see all those, all those different varieties there. I have humid hair, so sorry about that. <laughs> so growing basil, it grows very fast. As soon as it gets hot out, it starts going, going, going. And it goes, it gets to flower. Okay. It's best when you're working with your basil and growing it, it's, it is best to snip it off where those flowers are growing. Okay. Use, you can use those leaves if you're really into making potpourri, which I talked to you a little bit um, about last week, great for Christmas gifts. Save those little flowers. Stick them on a paper plate and let them dry. They are a wonderful addition to potpourris. You can eat them too if you wish. So snipping your basil, as you can see, this one's pretty tall and I haven't snipped it for a while. You can see where I did cut it probably about a week or now, I would say two weeks ago. Um, but it grows tall and if you keep snipping it from the top and snip those flowers off, it'll last a little longer. It'll just keep growing and growing and making flowers and flowers. It's like I said, it's an annual. So once it starts growing, it grows fast and it will grow until the fall, till it gets cold out. Um, but it'll get tall and leggy if you don't control it. Um, one of the most popular ways to use basil in your food is by making a pesto. Now I got my little pesto out right here. It's soft and, and hmm. pesto is when you have your basil is all full in your garden and you're ready to use all that up, which I only have two plants this year, so I don't know how much pesto I'm gonna get made, but here's some of it that I did make. And in pesto is, could be walnuts, pine nuts, any kind of nut, garlic, of course, lots of basil, olive oil, mm, Parmesan cheese. Those are the main ingredients. However, there's a lot of different varieties out there, so you can make it different ways. This one's the standard one. And then basil in a Capri salad, which is tomatoes and mozzarella and a piece of um, your sweet basil leaf. Mmm. Mm. So good. I don't have fresh tomatoes from the garden at the moment. So grape tomatoes, small tomatoes are fine to use. And they make little cute little appetizers. If you do it like this and you go away. There's many different ways to make Capri salad. Some people put a little balsamic over the top or other Italian herbs sprinkle over there. That's just tomato, mozzarella, basil, delish. Tomato sandwiches in the summertime with, I like to eat them with bunches of mayonnaise, fresh tomato, and I love to put basil leaves on there, take a bite into it and it all oozes out, it drips all over your chin, that tomato juice. Mm, mm, mm. So good. Basil is best used fresh. You can dry the basil leaves, but honestly, they do not taste anything like the fresh basil. You want to know how to preserve your basil? You can preserve it by making a pesto. And I make my pesto in trays and I put it in the freezer. You can use a simple ice cube tray um, to put your pesto in, freeze it, and then pop them out 
or leave it in the ice cube tray if you have it as extra and put it in your in your freezer if you want to preserve your whole basil leaves um, and keep them like they're fresh and use them as they're fresh okay take your basil leaves and you want to put it in a container these containers are really you can find them a lot of places um, dollar store with a little lid what you're going to do is you're going to put your fresh basil leaves in there simple you could put a little salt in there if you wish then you're going to take your olive oil and you're going to pour it over those leaves to cover the leaves oh, making a mess excuse me <laughs> push the leaves down underneath that olive oil so the olive oil is coating those leaves put your lid on it put it in the freezer but there you have your your fresh basil leaves all winter long put it in the freezer freeze it and it'll be good to go anytime you want they're really easy to preserve and you can do that with any variety of basil any flavor of basil the cinnamon basil is really excellent in tea um, and it's really it's used in a lot of different Asian dishes all the other different varieties of basil that you can get there's so many spicy basils and many different different varieties that they use in the Asian cooking and of course Italian cooking it's used um, in uh, let's see here growing it in your garden it's a great pollinator in your garden because the bees like those flowers that are popping out on the basil in the summertime it's great companion planting with tomatoes and green peppers it keeps those growing very well uh, let's see here if, if you never tried basil in a fruit salad do it take a little lime a little honey Drizzle it over, um, I'm going to say melons and maybe blueberries. Drizzle it over there and then your basil, slice into thin strips and put it in that. It's really, really good. You need to give that a try. Um, I told you about um, preserving it in your freezer. I really don't recommend drying it. Basil is also used in perfumery. Remember I said about the aroma of basil. It's also um, great for putting in um, your incense and perfumery. And it's very antioxidant, antiviral, and antimicrobial. So it, it's used mostly, I would say, as a culinary herb, but it also has a little sedative property to it. Hopefully I won't fall asleep doesn't have that much in it this is the tea um, that I posted it is um, basil ginger lime tea and I'm telling you it's really good it's very refreshing I love the lime in there it gives it a kick and something about that basil in this tea is really good it's very refreshing and you can taste it and by the way um, basil is in the lamps Lamiaceae family, which is the mint family. We talk a lot about herbs that are in the mint family. It's a very, very large family. So, um, I'm going to look here and show you. I think it's funny here. Basil is not mentioned in the Bible at all. But it is biblical for a man to make their wife coffee or tea in the morning. So maybe it does come from the New Testament. He brews. I know, that was kind of a corny little joke there, but I'm in a joke kind of mood. So it's not really mentioned in the Bible. 
However, basil has led me, I want to talk a little bit about making your own um, herbal teas. Herbal teas are so easy and it gives you the freedom to create and um, whatever you're in the mood to taste. You have little bits of things left over in your garden or from cooking or, or things like that. You can make yourself an herbal tea. Make one glass, it doesn't matter. You don't have to make a whole bunch of it. But herbal teas um, have some um, medical properties to them too. So sometimes people drink an herbal tea because they want the benefit of helping their upset stomach or helping them go to sleep or helping them with their lungs or a cough or a cold. So there's many different reasons other than it tastes really good um, to drink an herbal tea. And in, in this grand old book that I refer to all the time, um, because it is such um, full of history, like I always say, full of knowledge and full of love. In here, it mentions about, it doesn't say the word tea, but it says about the leaves of plants. So I'm going to tell you um, from chapter 12 in Ezekiel chapter 48, verse 12, I meant. It says, fruit trees of all kinds will grow along both sides of the river. The leaves of these trees will never turn brown and fall, and there will always be fruit on their branches. There will be a new crop every month, for they are watered by the river flowing from the temple. The fruit will be for the food and the leaves for healing right here the leaves for healing what else could that be and probably um they made tea out of that a lot and then back in the book of revelation in chapter 22 verse 2 it says it flowed down the center of the main street on each side of the river grew a tree of life bearing 12 crops of fruit with a fresh crop each month the leaves were used for medicine to heal the nations. Heal the nations. Yeah. So, that is where I'm going to connect in the Bible with our teas. And herbal teas, it's really good to make in the summertime with all the fresh herbs that you have in your garden in the summertime lemon flavored, even the savory herbs like thyme, basil, oregano. Uh, there's, there's a plethora of, of opportunity to make a tea. And when I brew my herbal teas, it takes a little bit long. I steep them a little longer. I do them like five to 10 minutes. Boil my water, throw them in. It could be called an infusion. Um, and let it sit and steep. This one here I let steep for, I would say a little closer than to 10 minutes. And just a point about basil, when you're using basil to cook, basil is best used at the end of the recipe, not cooked in that heat for so long because that is one um, like cilantro that loses its flavor when it gets too hot. So adding your pesto or your um, basil do, to like say your sauce or your Italian gravy, um, put it at the end. You can put it in while you're cooking, but make sure you add some fresh in at the end. It gives it that pop. So making herbal teas is not a science. It's very easy. And I'm gonna tell you a few um, little combinations of teas just to kind of um, inspire you to make some herbal teas because you can tailor it to suit you and you can use little leftover pieces of things like lemon, lemon rinds. If you're using lemons in the summer in your iced tea, save the yellow rind and put it on a paper plate and let those dry. You can use those dry and fresh. 
but you can keep them um, a long time if you dry them. So you're kind of in control of your herbal teas, okay? So if you wanted to add a little caffeine or a little kick, throw in a little black or green tea or oolong and, and uh, you'll, you'll get your caffeine in there. And I'm not focusing on the black and the green and the oolong tea today because that could be a whole other conversation because that's one plant and you get black tea because it's fermented and green tea and oolong. there's different processes but it all comes from the same plant but it has that caffeine in there for you so the sky's the limit so i'm going to tell you a couple combinations you can use mint ginger slices and coriander fennel seeds and peppercorns all together dried orange or dried lemon peels with cardamom and turmeric lemon rosemary and honey lemon and rosemary and honey is really really good just saying black tea sage and cinnamon dried chili pepper mm -hmm. and cinnamon and honey sliced ginger cardamom palm cardamom pods and black peppercorns which are really good they're in this tea that i have here and you know it's really good the tops of carrots the green tops of carrots you can use brew that with some honey and some lemon you can use basil and chamomile and lemon and lavender all together mint and strawberry leaves and ginger if you have strawberry plants in your yard you can dry your strawberry leaves they have a tiny bit of fruit flavor in them when you use tea when you make tea with them it's really good rose hips and lemongrass and lemon peel and cinnamon apple slices and cinnamon and ginger and vanilla that's another really good one you can add some honey to any of those you can use sugar if you want to um, so the sky is the limit when you're making tea try it taste it if you don't like it write it down keep yourself notes on what's really a good combination and it's really a fun thing to do um, and it's it might be a fun thing to do with your family or with maybe your grandchildren um, have them go into your garden and pick combinations and touch and smell and maybe they'll come up with a new com combination that you never would have thought about because when you smell the herbs it kind of goes into your mouth you can kind of taste it with your nose so have fun try to create some new teas and enjoy the flavors that come into your mouth so it's no secret that i love coffee i love coffee i hate to say it more than tea but i drink tea too but I have to have my coffee and my caffeine. So my little um, prayer today is, is a fun one. It's kind of a joke on Psalm 23. It shouldn't, I, it shouldn't be a joke, but it's a parody. It's, it's cute. It's all about caffeine. So here we go. Caffeine is my shepherd, I shall not daze. It maketh me wake into tea pastures. It leadeth me beyond the sleepy masses. It restoreth my bows. It leadeth me in the paths of consciousness for its namesake. Yea, I walk through the valley of the shadow of addiction. I will fear no equal. For thou art with me, Thy cream and thy sugar, they comfort me. Thou preparest a mug before me in the presence of the Starbucks. Thou anointest my day with pep and my mug runneth over. Surely coffee and tea shall follow me all the days of my life and I will dwell in the house of mochas forever. I read that on, uh, I think I found it on the internet and I thought, oh, that's darn cute. So there we are. And well, next week, 
I am on vacation. I'm going to be away. I'm going to be kayaking and camping and hiking and having a good time in the out of doors. So I'm not sure I'm going to hit a fertile soil next Friday, but I may surprise you and do it from where I'm at. I don't know. We'll see how, how it goes. So I hope everyone has a blessed week. And I just want to remind everyone that on Sunday we have live services at St. John's and they will be live on our Facebook page and um, the YouTube channel will be uploaded and we're having a little ice cream social on Sunday that I'll be missing. Hopefully I'll be kayaking and thinking of you all. I sure will. Have a blessed week. Great to see y'all. Bye-bye.